In this short power mill video, we're going to be taking a look at power mill's thickness tool to define our fixture for collision avoidance. To set the stage a little bit, we've got our part and our fixture models loaded into power mill with our fixture model located at the center of rotation. And both the fixture and the part are split onto separate levels so that we can easily select them. We have also already defined the block for this project as well as set up a work plane for our toolpath. You'll note that each one of these options, including the tool, are already active, ready to create a toolpath. Under the Home tab, in the Setups panel, we're going to click on our Thickness option. Now, the Thickness tool is a very powerful tool in Power Mill and can do many different things. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to focus on setting up our fixture for collision avoidance. In the Explorer window, if I right click and select all under my level that I've set my fixture on, you'll notice that Power Mill selected all of the components within that fixture. Back in my Thickness Preference dialog box, if I select one of the options here, I can add all of these surfaces to it. And I do that simply by clicking on the Acquire Components button here. That basically adds all of the surfaces to this line item here. Now under the machining mode, I'm going to take the drop down window and I'm going to set this to collision and I'm going to add a thickness of 0.0625. Now once I hit apply, that's going to set my default thickness value for those components selected. I'm going to hit accept to that. Now with that default thickness set, I'm going to go ahead and create my toolpath. I'm going to create a model area clearance toolpath here in my create toolpaths panel. Use the quick access button here to start that toolpath. Now what I want to point out within these settings is that under the model area clearance in the thickness settings, if I click the thickness button here, it brings up that exact same component thickness dialog box. And in the selected surfaces, you'll see that the default selected surfaces are already applied. I'm just going to hit accept to that, and I'm going to hit calculate. After the toolpath is calculated, I'm going to go ahead and right click on my tool here real quick, just so that I can turn the drawing off on the holder. That way we can see the diameter of the tool a little bit better. I'm going to go to my top view. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to select on a portion of the toolpath itself. I'm going to right click and hit simulate from here. That's going to bring my tool right to that location. Now as you can see, I have a gap between the fixture and the tool. That's our 0.0625 gap from our component thickness setup. Jogging the tool forward or backwards, you can see that along that toolpath, at no time does the tool come in contact with that fixture. It remains 0.0625 away, and we've successfully set that up for collision. 